Excuse me, mister. Did you tell me where I'll find a fella named Joe Walton? Is that supposed to be funny, kid? No. I was told he was in town, and I gotta see him. Look, son. You see that man standing over there in front of the saloon? Yeah. Go ask him where Walton is. Thanks, mister. Hey, reckon that's one of Walton's tricks? I don't know. Excuse me, mister. The man over there said you could tell me where Joe Walton is. Get away from here, kid. What's the matter of me asking about Joe Walton? He's my uncle, and I gotta see him. in the place, didn't he? He even shot first. I still say he rode blue chip to lose. All right, boys, take him over to the undertaker. Tell him to give him the best. I'm paying for it. How is he, Doc? Good shape, good shape. Lucky kid. A couple of more inches, he wouldn't be here at all. He's just a kid, man. Who is he, do you know? Yeah. Came to town looking for his uncle. Joe Walton. Hmm. Well, I guess that just about does it. Oh, Matt, maybe you'd like to keep this for luck. It was meant for you, you know. Yeah. Take good care of him, Doc. Give him the best. I thought the kid was working with Walton. We thought it was another one of his tricks or something. I thought so myself at first. Oh, Matt, it makes me shudder to think of it. You sure were lucky. You said something, sister. Well, I guess my number wasn't up, that's all. Was it, Doc? No, I don't think the kid's was either. Tell you what, Matt, a couple of days when he's feeling better, I'll move him over to my place, as if you want me to. I guess the least I can do is take care of the kid until he gets well. He might still be lucky for me. Maybe I can use him. Yeah? Well, maybe Kate will have something to say about that. It's all right. How long do I have to stay here? I don't know. Till the wound heals. You want anything? Nope. Thank you, ma'am. Try to rest. I'll be right here all the time. Once more. Up a hundred. Call. What do you got, Mike? There are sevens. Well, I'm beginning to think you're right about that lucky bullet of yours. I ain't never seen such a run of luck. Yeah, I'm sure glad this came my way. 
Uh, sure lucky for you. But not so lucky for the kid. Tell you, how is he? Got to be getting up pretty soon, shouldn't he? He's coming along all right. Kate's kind of babying him too much, I think. They sure did take to each other. longer I gotta stay here. Why, Bill, don't you like it here? Yeah, sure. You've been awful good to me. But I got things to do. What kind of things? Well, first I gotta find my uncle. And we gotta go back and clean out a couple of no-good skunks. Run me off our place. After my pa. After your pa what, Bill? Died. Would you like to tell me about it, Bill? Well, ever since I was big enough to straddle a horse, me and my pa and a couple of hired hands, I ended up herds of wild horses, broke them and sold them. Did all right, too. Made good money. A couple of months ago, we rounded up a bunch, and my pa was breaking one. Well, he was breaking this horse in a cinch. He never came to. Broken neck, they said. After that, I said I'd run the outfit like my pa did. These guys just left. Said nobody owned wild horses. Told me to get. And I went for a gun, they took it away. That's why I gotta find my uncle, so we can go back and settle with them guys. Well, eat your dinner. Kid, this bullet just stopped came from your Uncle Joe's gun. It was meant for me. Is he dead? Well, he shot first. And when you wasn't looking, guess he had it coming. Well, what's happened sort of makes us partners, Bill. You're my good luck. Well, now eat your dinner, Bill. Miss Kate, I can't remember my mother, but I bet she was just like you. That settles it, Matt. Settles what? We're going away from here and take him with us. We owe him something. Don't you feel that way? Sure, sure. I'll take care of him. He brought me luck. I'll teach him things. You will never make a gambler out of him. From you? That's funny. No, I mean it. We're going to go away from here. Not, not live over this joint. I like it here. This time I'm going to have my way. No matter what you say or do. You can beat me if you want to. I won't back down. Do you hear me? I won't back down. He ever beat you? Did he? Oh, I know, Bill. I was just talking kind of wild. Matt and I row a little, but that's all, isn't it, Matt? Sure. I wouldn't strike a woman. Ain't talking about any woman. I mean her. You better get back to bed now. Anybody ever hurt you? I'll kill him. <laughs> From the look in his eyes, I believe he would, too. Here they come now. I don't like any of this.
Kate. Howdy, Matt. Judge. This the boy, eh? Hmm, he's older than I thought he was from the way you talked. Well, take seats, folks. John Grant doing here. Well? Miss Kate, you can't keep this boy, not after what happened, and not living over the saloon. But I've got the promise of a house out on the edge of town. Matt and I will move tomorrow, won't we, Matt? Well, anything the judge says, my dear. It ain't fitting, Miss Kate. You know it ain't fitting. Even if I go to church? Well, it ain't a matter of church or no church. It's circumstances. There's already been some complaints. So I thought we'd just talk it over between ourselves. Now, John here is a fine, honest young fella. Got his own place. I think it'd be better for the boy to be with him. Judge, I've been cold decked. I thought you'd listen, but your mind was all made up, wasn't it? And you, you never opened your mouth after you promised. You always promise. Really, come on. Thanks, Judge. Meet me at the livery stable at 3.30. I want you to take Blue Chip with you. Kate tells me you're a crack rider. That you even do bronc buttons. I can ride all right. That's fine. I own the best quarter horse in the state, Blue Chip. I'm going to let you ride him down to Grant's place. Want to keep him there for a while. Is he a real special breed? Yeah, comes from the Marshall Ranch. Finest talk there is. You know John Grant? Yeah. Hello, Bill. Hi, Mr. Grant. All ready, John? As soon as Pete's got blue chips saddled. Hey, Pete! Come in right out. Is that blue chip? That's him. Gee. <laughs> Is this what they call a quarter horse? Sure. Can't you tell? Look at that jowl. Depth of his chest. Forearms, built low to the ground. Fast? Fastest thing around here. Here you are, Mr. Daggett. Thanks. Thank you. Here you are, Bill. I'm putting him in your care. You're working for me. I want you to train him and keep him in condition. I'm putting him in a big race the 4th of July. I'll take good care of him. Fine. Maybe I'll let you ride him in the race. Would you like that? I'd like that real fine. <laughs> All right, we'll see. Now look, I'll, uh, I'll sell that old horse of yours, but in the meantime, here's $5. I won't need it. Mm, I think you'd better take it anyway. All right. Take good care of him, John, like the judge said. Oh, we'll get along, won't we, Bill? Sure thing. Let's go. Best horse I ever rode. He used to belong to a fellow named Bob Marshall. A couple of months ago, he brought the horse to town for a shoeing. Got mixed up in a card game. Next day, he gave Matt Daggett a bill of sale for him. Marshall's tried to buy him back a dozen times. Matt always says no. Says he likes the name. Wants all the blue chips in sight. Funny reason to like a horse. I like him if he didn't have no name at all. Guess you know it was on account of blue chip your uncle got killed, don't you? Was that it? Yeah, Matt hired him to ride the chip in a race with a horse and teeth brought to town. It was a mix-up at the start. Blue chip got off bad and lost. 
Crossed him out of pile, but he didn't bat an eye and until your uncle got drunk and started flushing a lot of money. Then Matt made some remarks and your uncle got mad. That's how he come to get himself killed. Thanks for telling me. Kid in town? Yeah, I know. I met him that day. Hi, kid. Hello. Yeah, I looked all over. Ain't you got nothing to drink in this shack? Yeah, I think so. Well? I ain't had time to think yet. You had a couple of weeks. I know, but, well, things are different just now. Bill, you better go put the horses up. All right. a young lady to act. I don't care, Uncle Bob. Blue Chip's mine by rights, and you know it. Now, Matt Daggett has a bill of sale for the horse, and that settles it. But you promised him to me. Now, you just put that stick down and run along home, young lady. You saddle tramp. If you ever get in my way again, I'll ride you down. You're Bill Walton, aren't you? Yeah. I'm Bob Marshall. I used to own Blue Chip. Yeah, I know. He looks to be in pretty good shape, Bill. Yeah, he's fine. He's a great horse, Mr. Marshall. A great horse. I understand that Matt Daggett wants you to train him for the 4th of July race. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'll be glad to help you all I can. You see, my ranch is right next to Grant's here, and uh, I'll drop over once in a while. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mr. Marshall. <laughs> Bye, Bill. Bye. Oh, uh, Bill, uh, I apologize for my niece. <laughs> it's all right. She's just a girl. <laughs> So long, Bill. So long, Mr. Marshall. Now let's get on to cases. Are you going or not? Well, I... Yes or no? I don't know why you picked me, Tom. I never done nothing like this before. Scares me just thinking about it. I won't be any good to you. Oh, yes, you will. The boss sizes men up good. That's why he picked you. You may be a little squeamish, but you'll stick. But people, everybody thinks I'm honest. Even though I don't amount to much, they trust me. That's just why we like you for this deal. Nobody will tie you in with it. Now, come on. Did you hear me?
Mr. Bill, if I'm gone for a few days, do you think you can make out the loan? Being alone don't bother me none. Tom here wants me to go up north with him to help pick out some cattle. That's all right. I, uh, I wouldn't want Miss Kate to know. See, I told her I'd watch out after you real good. Don't worry, I won't ever tell her. Thanks. You're a good kid, Bill. up for a good horse like you. Don't worry, we'll soon have it fixed up. There you are, fella. That looks more like it, don't it? Yeah, I'd say so. Marshal. Hello, Bill. Boy, you sure have done a lot of work around here in three days. Well, it wasn't a fit place for blue chip. Hello, boy. I brought you a carrot. Yeah. <laughs> He's sure spoiled. He's like that tomboy niece of mine. I don't know about the girl. For me, he's perfect. <laughs> uh, say, Bill, have you ever ridden in a quarter horse race? No. Nope. Ever see one? Not like they tell me they ride them up here. This horse can spin on a dime. He's willing and fast. Fast as anything around here. He's got a fighting heart. No matter who he belongs to, he's like one of my family. I don't want to see him ruined. He's got a big rider who'll get the stove up. Your uncle could sure handle this horse. He was a good horseman. Did he lose that race on purpose? Well, honestly, I... I don't know, Bill. Well, you see, he liked liquor and didn't like Matt Daggett, and, well, there are lots of ways of losing a race, especially if you don't want to win it. I don't know. Well. Whoa! Miss Kate! Here comes Bill. Miss Kate. Hello, Bill. Help me down. You're a sight. What on earth did you get into? Been doing a little cleaning up, whitewashing. It's a good thing I brought some clothes out for you. Oh, these are just some old things of Mr. Grant's. Well, is there somebody going to help me down? Oh, sure. Yeah. Let me help you. Thanks, Mr. Marshall. Oh, you're welcome. My, you ladies are a long way from home. Hello, Kate. Hello, Robert. Oh, I'm exhausted. If you think I'm making that trip back again today, you're crazy. We're staying here overnight if I have to find a haystack to crawl into. All right, we'll stay. But Bill and John can crawl into the haystack. We'll take the cabin. <laughs> Where is John? Oh, he's away. Went up north with another fellow. About some cattle. Just for a day or so. Be right back. I guess I better clean up. Go on in. I'll be right back. I suppose you heard about the two fellows who didn't rob the Corville stage. No, when? Yesterday. Lucky the money box was bolted down to the stage. They didn't get anything. But old Monday, the stage guard, was killed. They catch them? Not up to the time we left. Well, I'm getting out of this line before I melt. How come Daggett sent the kid out here with a horse? Has he got something up his sleeve? I don't know. John and Matt are mixed up in something together. But about the boy, Matt stacked the cards on me, he and the judge. If I'd known about it in time, I would have asked you to take him. John Grant isn't a bad fellow, but he's not the man to raise this boy. Oh, John's all right. He's not too smart, but at least he's always been straight. I know Judge Trumbull would have let you take him. I've already got Ricky Summers at the ranch. <laughs> to say nothing of that wild niece of mine. Oh, I've got my hands full. Well, aren't you coming in? Oh, no, I'd better be get, getting back to the ranch, and if you won't need anything, why... Thank you. I know we'll get along nicely. Good to see you, Robert. Bye. <laughs> I've seen cleaner big beds. Maybe we better use that haystack. I was gonna get at this right after I cleaned up the barn. Well...
It'd be safer if you went straight into town. Well, I ain't going nowhere till I get another drink. Hey, what is this? Oh, Kate. I didn't know you were here. So that's why you want me to go into town, huh? I'm sorry, Kate. Come on, Tom, let's go. Not until I get another drink. Come on. No. I said, come on, Rofer, let's go. Says one of you giving me orders. Leave me alone. Well, Rofer, you're drunk. Come on now, get out of here. I'm not drunk. I'm not drunk, I tell you. I'm cold sober. If you don't believe me, give me a little kiss. See if you can smell any liquor. Come on. If you touch her, I'll kill you. No, Bill, don't. Put up that gun, kid. Step away from me, Miss Kate. Bill, please, don't. Now, hit your saddle and get. He didn't scare you too much, did he, Miss Kate? No, Billy, I'm all right. Why, that dirty saddle tramp, wait till I tell Matt. <laughs> What's so funny? He bluffed Tom Roper with an empty gun. I nearly died when he did it. If you'd have pulled that trigger and nothing happened, he'd have killed you sure, Bill. Why ain't it loaded? Well, well we were firing from the saddle at a mark. And riding fast, it's hard to reload. I, I guess I forgot. Wearing a gun unloaded. I'm very disappointed in you, John. The judge put the boy in your care. I'm sorry, Kate. Billy, hitch up the horses. Doris and I are going back to town. Right now? It's almost sunup. But can't you wait till breakfast? No, even? we'll stop at Crosby's and eat. But Miss Kate, go on, do as I tell you. Now this time, take a shorter grip on the reins. All right, now, get ready, go! <laughs> Boy, that kid's gonna be all right. I sure set the horse pretty. Hello, boys. Hello, Sheriff. What are you doing here? I want to have a little talk with John Grant here. Uh, what about, Sheriff? John Roper's turned mad dog since he learned the kid here run him off with an empty gun. How'd he find out? He was in the back room at Crosby's when Kate and Doris stopped by for breakfast. Oh, he heard Doris telling about it. Didn't hurt Miss Kate. No. No, but he knows the story would be all over the country in no time, making him a laughing stock. So he had to go out and kill somebody to prove he was really bad. Who'd he kill, sir? Harmon Jones. Jones caught him in his barn stealing a horse. Roper shot him down. That's bad. John, what about you and Roper? Where'd you been when you come riding in here last night? Well, uh, Roper thought he had a deal to feed some steers on his ranch here. He hired me to help with the drive if he made the deal. Turned out to be a wild goose chase, so he came back. Roper had been drinking pretty heavy, and when he found the girls, why, he got mean. That's when Billy here chased him off. Bringing cattle in to feed. That's funny. Roper don't own enough range land to swing a wide loop on. I guess I never thought of that. We were wearing an empty gun, John. Oh, Roper bragging about how he could shoot from horseback, so... <clears throat> he, uh... We banged away a few times at a couple of marks, and... I guess I just forgot to reload. If he's doing something wrong, he wouldn't have forgot. You don't forget when you're scared, do you? That's right, Bill. Well, I gotta be getting back to town. You know, the kid's not too safe with Roper on the loose. You're not either, John. That's right. Bob, how about taking Bill over to your place for a while? Why, sure. You're welcome to come along yourself, John. No, thanks. I'll go in with the sheriff. If I go over to your place, I got to take Blue Chip, too. Why, sure, boy. Saddle mine, too, will you, Billy? Sure. Good. Well, I've got to get a, get a posse organized and try and get Roper before he does any more killing. John, you can catch up to it. I'll catch you. 
Let's go, Lou. You will take care of Bill, won't you, Bob? Don't you worry. Come on, Billy, get down. We'll turn the chip loose. You'll go right to the barn. He was raised here. Yeah, Pedro will take care of him. Go ahead, Blue Chip. <laughs> Come on, boy. Uh, sit down a minute, Bill. I'll be right back. I'll get you settled. All right, Mr. Marshall. this morning, Pedro. Bueno. Muy bueno. He sure is a good horse, ain't he? But a sure. Mucho horse. Mucho horse. I guess I better get to work. Well, fella, how do you like being back home, huh? I don't blame you. Mr. Marshall's a nice man. Right in there, senorita. Looks good, too, he does. Oh, there you are, my beautiful baby. Oh, you, eh? Yes, me. Back. You bring my horse back here. Didn't you hear what she said? You must be that saddle tramp that's sponging on John Grant. You must be that Ricky that's sponging off of Mr. Marshall. <laughs> Telling all the folks you bluffed Tom Roper with an empty gun. <laughs> Liar. I'm asking you. Ricky said it was a lie about him bluffing Tom Roper. Pushed him off the horse. Then they started to fight. Ricky hit him with his boot. Because he hit me with a rock. A rock? There are no rocks around here. Well, with something. Look, you can feel a lump. Go on, get out of here. Is he... is he badly hurt? No, I don't think so. It looks worse than it is. We gotta go, fella. If we stay, I'll kill that Ricky, sure. I might even slap that Jerry's ears back. Mr. Marshall wouldn't like that. But come on, we'll go back to Mr. Grant's. Hand, will you? 
fifty dollars. I can't call. <laughs> get him when you got him. That's my system. Yeah, mine too. But I don't seem to get him. <laughs> Deal me off a couple of hands. What are you doing in town? Where's the kid? At Marshall's. Marshall's? Yeah, on account of Roper. You heard what happened. You mean, uh, a gun business? Well, the sheriff thought Bill would be safer there. What about the horse? He's there, too. The kid wouldn't leave without him. Hey, that's all right. Yeah, fine. Still working for me, aren't you? <laughs> That's just what the race needed. Marshal to train my horse. <laughs> Boy, will the suckers go for that. <laughs> All the dirty, low-down skunks. What did I tell Mr. Grant? I'm silent, Pete. I'll be back to take care of him as soon as I see somebody. Okay, Bill. just a minute ago. Maybe he's upstairs. Thanks. Miss Kate, it's me, Billy. Oh, Bill. Oh, Miss Kate. What's the matter, Miss Kate? You sick? Just a bad headache. Don't turn on the lamp, Bill. Sit down. Tell me everything. Did they catch Roper yet? No. That's why I came to town. He was just out the cabin and wrecked it. Guess he was after me. Oh, Bill, no. Lucky I wasn't there. The sheriff was out to Mr. Grant's the other day. Sent me over to Mr. Marshall's. Oh, that's good. I was worried about you. Why didn't you stay there? Oh, I don't know. Can't stand that girl. That you, Bill? Yeah. What are you doing here? I told him I had a sick headache. Yeah. She has these spells. Uh, oughtn't to have visitors. She'd be all right by tomorrow, though. Uh, maybe you'd better come back then, eh? Bye, Miss Kate. 
Bye, Bill. If you want anything. Oh, she'll be all right. Bye. When I see you tomorrow, we'll talk over plans for the race. Say, you better find John Grant. He's in town. All right. You might have told him. If he ever saw me like this, he'd kill you. I'd get killed himself trying. Oh, 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 no. He's my good luck. You think you can talk yourself out of anything, don't you? Sure. You could have been drunk or fell downstairs. You cold-blooded, lying crook! Where do you think you're going? Downstairs to show everybody what a dirty black leg you are! Good night, my dear. <laughs> Hello, Bill. Howdy, Mr. Grant. What's the matter? They all stare at me like I was a two-headed calf or something. <laughs> That's what comes from getting the best of a fellow like Roper. You're famous, Bill. Well, I don't like it. Hello, Tony. Hello, John. Howdy, Jeff. Hi, John. So you're the young maverick that made Roper turn tail, huh? Oh, let him alone, Jeff. And you're gonna ride blue chip come 4th of July? Maybe. I hear that Ricky Summers is gonna ride raindrop. You got about as much chance of beating Ricky as I have of dying rich. Yeah, that Ricky can get speed out of a sawhorse. I'm betting my shirt on raindrop. I was by the livery stable this morning. Got to look at that blue chip. Why, he's all stove up. You're a big mouth liar. You want to bet against blue chip? All right, put up or shut up. You got yourself a bear by the tail, Jeff. All right, come on, pack up. How much? You cover all I bet? Every last cent. At two to one? Two to one. All right. Here's fifteen dollars, Tony. You hold the stakes. Uh, two to one. That'd make you put up uh, thirty dollars. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. That's all I got. Thanks. Here's ten dollars. That's the whole of bet. I'll be right back. He's a regular young fire eater, that boy. Mr. Daggett around? I don't know. He was here a little while ago. Try the office. Thanks. What you want, Bill? Nothing. Marshal in town? Yes. Where can I find him? I don't know. Why? I gotta see him. What for? Well, I uh, I want to borrow twenty dollars. Oh, I see. Oh, I'll work it out for him any way you want. But I just gotta have twenty dollars. What for? To bet on blue chip. The guy in the barber shop was shooting off his mouth, and I had to call him. I didn't have enough money, so well anyway. Wait. Here, take these. Here. Well, take it. It's my money. But don't you take it.
tell anyone. Gee, thanks. I'll work it out for you now. I'm only doing it for blue chip. Thanks anyway. Hey! Thanks again. Luke Benson had a lot of friends in this town, Roper. So did old Monday, the stage guard. Some of the boys was to take a notion to come and get you. I don't rightly know if I could stop them. Don't you think you're kind of foolish to take all the blame yourself? Don't you worry about that. I ain't going to take it alone. The sheriff just brought in Roper. Caught him up in Box Canyon. Huh? He killed Roof Benson before they caught him, though. Doris, um, tell Mike to fix us a couple of drinks, will you? Sure, Ned. Do you think they can make him talk? Depends. He'll expect us to get him loose. It's all right if somebody doesn't get the idea to string him up because he killed that deputy. Yeah, he's liable to talk his head off to a mob. When a man's being hung, he doesn't talk much, John. What he says isn't heard. I don't know about you, but I need a drink. Congratulations. I hear you got Roper safe behind bars. Yep, and he's been doing a little talking about the holdup and murder of old Monday, the stage guard. You better come along, John. Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. John, let's go. But that's a lot of money for you to bet on a horse. What are you going to do if you lose? Blue Chip ain't gonna lose. What's wrong, Mr. Grant? Nothing. Just a little mix-up, Bill. What's it all about, Mr. Marshall? They don't think he had anything to do with the stage. No money, do they? I don't know. Come on, Bill. <laughs> What's all this about John Grant? Grant? Why ask me? If John's in trouble, I just figured you'd be mixed up in it somewhere. Your figuring's a little bit off, Mr. Marshall. I'm not so sure. John's always been pretty straight, honest. A little shiftless, lazy maybe, but always in the clear. Until you saddled him with the boy here, the horse. You implying that that had anything to do with what's happened? It was just about the size of it. Well, say something. You're doing the talking. Uh, Bill, you uh, better wait upstairs for me. All right. this race that's coming up. There's talk going around town that it's going to be crooked. You don't believe that, do you? I don't know. But I do know that if blue chip's in shape, Raindrop can't beat him unless the race is fixed. And if he isn't in shape, I'll see to it the race is called off. Understand? You're pretty smart, Marsh. You don't know that anything is crooked. You couldn't, because it's not. But you just said it might be right here in front of all these people. Now, when Blue Chip wins, you'll tell everybody you made an honest race out of it. Is that right? Well, I don't think you'd dare let him lose now. Just a minute, Marshal. You think I don't know why you're trying to pin something on me? Because you know if that happened, my wife would pack up and leave me. And you'd like to have her do that, wouldn't you, Marshal? If you ever mention your wife's name and mine again, I'll break every bone in your body. Take it easy, Matt. He's unarmed. Now, look. We can't take a chance on leaving him in jail. 
If Roper really starts to talk, this town will be too hot for all of us. Go over and get him. And shut him up. All right, let's go. Mr. Grant.
2500 apiece. Now go out among those suckers and cover all the blue chip money you can find. What about the odds? Start them at even money. And go as high as three to one on blue chip if you have to. But don't let a bet get away. We're going to clean up on this race. If the pull something happens and blue chip wins, you'll be broke. Let me worry about that. Now go on. When you run out of money, come back and I'll give you some more. All right, boys, spin these badges on. Boys, it's a holiday. There's a lot of people in town. Let them have plenty of fun, but don't let them get too rough. And don't bring in too many because you know we ain't got much room in there. Now spread out and go to work. Hey, Jim. Hi, Sam. Hi, Rex. Hi, Jim. Think she's got a chance? Think. I got $200. It says she'll win. I hope you're right. That kid ain't never even been in a race before. Am I gonna learn him something? <laughs> Why, when I get through with him, he'll wish he ain't never even seen Blue Chip. Good. Now, Bill, you try and keep him steady while you're waiting for the starting gun. And be sure he's not off balance, or you're not either. Ricky's gonna try some tricks to uh, fret the horse and to rile you up. But you hold your temper. And trust that starter to get you off fair. Oh, Uncle Bob, I'm so nervous. I wish it was over. I got a whole flock of pigeons right here. What are you worried about, your $20? Well, not only that, but... How did you know? Oh, no, no, he didn't tell me. I think your money's safe. Oh, good luck to you, boy. Thanks. You remember what I told you? I will, Mr. Marshall. Okay, boy. Uncle Bob only thinks you're gonna win. But I know it, Bill. not to come. But let's take him in and tattle him, huh? Afternoon, Miss Kitty. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Robert. Hello, Kate. Hello, Jerry. Hello, Mrs. Daggett. Is Blue Chip in good shape? Oh, fine. I just came from the stable. How about Bill? Is he nervous? Well, if he is, you'd never notice it. Look, why don't you go down and see him? Well, I don't think there's going to be time. Robert, I'd like to talk to you about something after the race. All right. Uh, come on, youngster. Let's get out the finish line. Say, Bill, I almost forgot. Doris has a lucky charm she wants me to put on Blue Chip's bridle. Go out and get it for me, will you? Give me what you want to put on Blue Chip. Huh? Oh, oh yes. Please the ladies, don't we, Bill? 
Do we? All right, bring them out. Oh, Bill, you can sit on the back of the buggy and lead him. I'll walk. You met Daggett? Yeah. Been looking all over for you. Here. What is it? What's the matter, Matt? Oh, nothing, nothing. A fellow calling off a bet, that's all. Oh. Get up. A horse may wear halter or bridle, and the rider may use whip or spurs. Ha, ah, hold your breath. I know all that. This race is from a standing start. The horses must be nose even, with all feet down when the starting signal's given. When I say go, you turn around and go. Any questions? No. Boy, if he just don't explode over Ricky's dirty tricks. All right, boys, get ready. Try that again, Ricky. Just because he's a baby, we're going to have to wet nurse him? Yeah, Ricky will ride that kid right into the ground. Yeah. <laughs> All right, are you ready, boys? Now then. All ready, one, two, go! get that horse away before they find anything. Just a minute, Marshal. That's my horse. I'll look after him. What's the matter, Matt? A broken leg? Yeah, yeah, that's it. The leg's broken. Well, too bad. I hate to have to do this, but... His leg ain't broke at all. You ain't gonna shoot him. Come on, kid, the horse is done for. Here, tell you, he ain't. Wait a minute, Daggett. I'll give you $500 for him, broken leg and all. Well, that's, that's a lot of money for a dead horse. I'll worry about that. Is it a deal? Well, all right. I'll bring the money to your place in an hour. You have a bill of sale ready. All right. Hey, Bill. Take him back to the stable. Take him slow. Holy cow! What is it, Bill? The dirty horse killers. A wire buried so deep I didn't see it before. A wire? Anybody do that to a horse ought to be shot. That's why I want to shoot Blue Chip, so no one would find out. There's one more score I have to settle with Matt Daggett. You were wonderful, Bill. Just wonderful. This the fella deserves a credit. Gee, 
The way he ran. And with that wire, too. Must have been killing him. You're a swell horse, boy. Yes, and now he's ours again. Say, maybe Uncle Bob will adopt you. And then we'll be, we'll be cousins or something. Gee. <laughs> 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 Howdy, Bill. Mr. Grant. Mr. Grant. Yeah, you pretty near didn't win the race. Yeah. What are you doing back in town? Oh, just a little business. It'll be finished up soon. And I sort of wanted to say howdy to you and goodbye. Oh, you a lot, Bill. I thought maybe it'd be a good thing for you to tell the sheriff that Matt Daggett was behind that stage job. And it was Matt's gang that had Roper and me hung. Ain't often I try on a friend, Bill, but this time I got my reasons. Well, be seeing you. You're a good kid. Yes, sir, you're all right. <laughs> In there. That lamp steady, will you? Well, come on, kids, get out of the way. Go over there and sit down. Go on, go on. Who shot him? Miss Kate? Yes, and what he did to Blue Chip. Was it a fair fight? Uncle Bob wasn't armed. Up there, and Doc Brandon's with him. Maybe it's true about them. Of course it is. I never lie. Don't bother me, Doris. Give me a drink. You get away from between me and that crooked gambler. I'm gonna kill you. There. What for? I 
never hurt you. You did worse. You hurt Blue Chip to make him lose. And shot Mr. Marshall when he called you. Well, go ahead and shoot if you want to. All right, then. If you won't fight, then put up your hands. Why? Because I'm going to turn you over to the sheriff. You're mixed up in that stage robbery. You planned the whole thing. It was your gang that hung Roper and Mr. Grant. Who told you that? John Grant. It was me that cut him down after he was hung. Well, he's a liar. So I'm a liar, am I? Yes. <gasps> 